Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about cell-mediated immunity. So let's just begin by looking at the players of cell-mediated immune system. So there are three major players which plays very important role in this immune process. They are cytotoxic T cells, NK cells or natural killer cells and NK T cells. So we'll learn about all of their functions, their molecular details and how they orchestrate the response against several pathogens. So the key component of cell mediated immunity is a cytotoxic T cell. Cytotoxic T cell has alpha beta T cell receptor but CD8 as a co-receptor which is different from T helper cells. So let's talk about where do these cytotoxic T cells come from and we know that the development of T cell just like other lymphocytes starts in the bone marrow. In the bone marrow, there would be hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell giving rise to common lymphoid progenitor. From the common lymphoid progenitor, T cell precursors would be produced. Now, once these T cell precursors are there in the bone marrow, they would be secreted into the bloodstream. And then the next stage of T cell development starts in thymus. So in the thymus, T cells would undergo thymic training. And there are several rounds of training that these T cells receive. And each of these training ensures some capabilities are selected in these T cells. So in the thymic medulla or thymic cortica medulli medullary junction, there would be some medullary epithelial cells which express antigens on top of class 2 MHC or class 1 MHC. The T cells, the double positive T cells, which recognize class 2 MHC bound peptides, they in turn upregulate CD4 expression, whereas downregulates CD8 expression. In contrast, the cells which recognize class 1 MHC bound peptide, they upregulate the CD8 expression, whereas downregulate CD4 expression and becomes a cytotoxic T cell. So now we know where does this cytotoxic T cell come from. But these cytotoxic T cells that are generated inside the thymus, they are naive. That means they have not encountered any pathogen derived antigen yet. So let's see how they actually res respond when they are activated. So first these naive cells need to be activated. And we know that helper T cells are activated by dendritic cell. And it turns out that these Cytotoxic T cells can also be activated by the dendritic cell by a process known as cross presentation. Dendritic cells generally express class 2 MHC molecule because they are professional antigen presenting cells. So obviously, they show their pathogen derived antigen to helper T cells. But these helper T cells in rare occasions can also permit the dendritic cell or give these dendritic cell the license to present pathogenic antigen on top of class 1 MHC molecule. Now this class 1 MHC molecule derived uh, pathogen derived ant antigen is actually displayed to CD8 positive cytotoxic T cell. That leads to activation of CD8 positive T cell. Now, CD8 positive T cell, once they are activated, they are no more naive in an activated form. They would undergo several changes and they would engage to kill the pathogen uh, uh, or kill the cell which is affected by this pathogen. So let us take an example. These cytotoxic T cell plays a major role against intracellular pathogens such as viruses or specific intracellular bacteria. So in this example, some of these viruses has entered this cell which is marked in yellow and these virus infected cell would be displaying some of these viral proteins on top of its class 1 MHC molecule. Now this class 1 MHC bound peptides would be presented to cytotoxic T cells. Cytotoxic T cells have a lot of granules filled up with perforin and granzymes. These granules filled up with perforin and granzyme helps to kill the cell which is affected. So perforin creates pore in the membrane surface allowing the granzyme to get in. So once the granzyme is inside the target cell, the granzyme 
can activate BEAT. Now BEAT is a mitochondrial protein which helps in apoptosis pathway. BEAT allows leakage of cytochrome C into the cytosol and cytochrome C can form a complex with APOF1 and the ultimate consequence is production of caspase 3 or activation of caspase 3 by proteolytic cleavage. Caspase 3 is the executor caspase. That means caspase 3 would lead to apoptosis. So once caspase 3 is activated, it would generally lead to apoptosis. So in this case, we learned that granzyme mediated pathway can lead to caspase 3 activation and thereby apoptosis. There are other ways by which this killing can take place. That is via fast and fast ligand mediated pathway. Fast and fast ligand mediated interaction can active caspase 8, I mean cleave caspase 8 such that the caspase 8 is activated. But caspase 8, unlike caspase 3, is not an executor caspase, it's an initiator caspase. So obviously caspase 8 would try to activate caspase 3 in an indirect fashion but ultimately leading to apoptosis. So be it fast mediated pathway or be it porphyrin granzyme mediated pathway, ultimate, ultimate fate is apoptosis with the help of cleaved caspase 3. And the cell would die and blib out. Along with it, the virus or the pathogens which is inside it, it would also be demolished. Now let's talk about the second cell type in cell mediated immunity. That is NK cells. We can introduce NK cells just like a cold blood killer in the immune system. So they are born and specialized to kill. So let's talk about some important features of the NK cells. NK cells have set of activatory receptors and inhibitory receptors that they use for their function. I'll tell you more about that. But NK cells are highly loaded with cytotoxic granule as you can see. NK cells has their signature receptors NK1.1 which tells us that this is internal NK cell. They also have FC receptor and also they have FAS or FAS ligands, all of which can tell us that they engage the uh, infected cell in a way similar to the T cytotoxic cell. But the detection is very different. Generally, there are two types of interactions happening between a NK cell and the cells that it engage. One is activatory ligand and activatory receptor mediated interaction. So the inherent tendency is to kill the cell. But there is inhibitory receptors which are triggered by class 1 MHC expression. If class 1 MHC is expressed, this inhibitory receptor would give a strong inhibitory si uh, signal that would allow this dendritic cell to disengage. But if this inhibitory signal is not there, so it would look like an open accelerator. So it would accelerate the process of killing. So obviously, if this signal is not there, the class 1 MHC is not there, then the NK cells would be free to engage and it would secrete a hell lot of perforin and granzyme, ultimately leading to apoptosis of the target cell. And this lead to destruction. And the way it performs apoptosis is very similar to cytotoxic T cell. It could be via porphyrin granzyme mediated pathway or a fast ligand mediated pathway. So obviously, when a virus gets get a virus is infecting a cell, it might play a trick. It might lead to down regulation of the MHC cell, expecting that the CD8 positive T cells would be confused and would disengage. But these poor viruses don't know there is a fail-safe mechanism in our body and that is done by natural killer cells whose inherent tendency is to kill the cell and once it would find MSC it would not kill the cell. In this case the MSC is severely downregulated. there is not too much surface expression of MHC compared to the nearby cells. So obviously in this cell the NK cell would engage and try to kill the cell with apoptosis. Now let's talk about the third cell type, NK T cells. So NK T cells has a lot of things common with both T cell and the NK cell. And it was first discovered in a mouse and people thought this is this have a strong resemblance with the T cell but also it 
is associated with the NK1.1 surface marker. So people were really confused about NK T cells and recently people get to know about NK T cells more. Now NK T cells has T cell receptor just like other T helper cell or cytotoxic T cell. It has NK1.1 which is a bona fide receptor for NK cells. It has granzyme and perforin loaded vesicles. It also has FC receptors. So few characteristics are actually similar to T cell, few characteristics are similar to NK cells. So that kinds of put these cell types in an interface between these two cells. Now these T cell or NK T cells, their receptor is less diverse compared to a T helper cell. Generally, they recognize lipid or glycolipid type antigens presented on a CD1 molecule, which is not exactly a MHC, but it's kind of a MHC uh, like molecule. So obviously the way they interact or way they recognize the antigen is very different compared to a TH cell. And they have limited diversity. NKT cell seems to be essential for several aspects of immunity. Because the mouse where NK T cells are not there or they are abrogated, in that case, the risk of autoimmune disease is increased. So obviously it has a role to play in autoimmune disease. NK T cells secrete cytokines that has diverse effect and it can secrete diverse cytokines such as IL-2, IL-4, interferon gamma or TNF alpha. This IL-4 and interferon gamma can help in T cell differentiation into a Th1 subtype or Th2 subtype and which has deep consequence in terms of immune responses. Now TN TNF alpha or IL-6 can also invoke inflammatory responses. So these NKT cells triggers inflammatory response which is characteristic feature of these cell types. Obviously they have FC receptor so they can really um, engulf opsonized pathogens with their FC receptors. And that is very similar to other cell types. And this is kind of like ADCC mechanism or antibody dependent cellular cytotoxic me toxicity mechanism. So in short, these cells eliminate targets which are in fact infected with intracellular pathogen or intracellular bacteria or a virus. Also, it has profound role in case of tumor immunity. So all these features really make, make NKT cells an interesting cell type to study and active research is going on. So let's look at where does NKT cell development take place. Just like any other T cell, NKT cell development also takes place in the thymus. So in the thymus, we know there are rounds of selection that a T cell has to undergo to become a mature T cell. But from the double positive T cell, from which the T helper cell and T cytotoxic cells are born, from the same subpopulation, NKT cells are also born. Lineage tracing experiments confirm these observations. But exactly the molecular mechanism by which N N NKT lineage is separated from these cytotoxic or helper T lineage is still not known. And a lot of research is going on in this field. So let us summarize what we have learned so far. We have learned the players of the cell mediated immunity, mechanism of effector response, how apoptosis is triggered, NK cells response and NK T cells response. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And in this video, we get a comprehensive overview of the cell mediated immune responses. So if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also support me in Patreon, be a Patreon. You would get to know a very wide variety of contents in Patreon. And my courses are also present in Unacademy. So use my code AP10 to get a 10% discount. And Unacademy is really creating a huge impact in Indian education. So do subscribe Unacademy. Thank you guys.